Is my screen visible? Yeah, it's loading. Yeah, sure. You can see the screen. All right. Uh, I think we can start. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yaya. So today uh, we will talk about uh, data analysis techniques. Um, so before we start, uh, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand. Uh, I might not see it, so you have to let me know. Uh, you can open your mic and speak up. Uh, so before we dive into the uh, data analysis techniques, um, I believe you have started already uh, on the data analysis process, right? So uh, in the data analysis process, uh, as you know, the first step is uh, to understand uh, the business needs, uh, which means the definition uh, of the, the question that you want to answer or the, the purpose of the, the project. Uh, once you have understand that, uh, the next step is to uh, collect the data. Um, it can come from different sources, uh, but for your project, uh, it's been provided, right? So after you have uh, the data, the next step is uh, to clean up the data. Uh, we have to prepare it for uh, uh, analysis, uh, which means we have to do some uh, pre-processing. Uh, I believe you have done that yesterday, uh, some data wrangling, like handling the uh, missing values, uh, how to fill the non values, etc. And uh, the fourth step, which is analyzing the data, which we going to discuss today, uh, uh, is the, the fourth step. And the last step would be uh, visualizing and sharing your findings. Um, I believe this morning you have started uh, some techniques uh, to visualize your data on Google Sheet. Um, so today we will we'll just briefly discuss some of the uh, techniques for uh, data analysis, right? So you have cleaned your data uh, and now you have to do the analysis, right? So uh, the first step in choosing your uh, data analysis technique uh, is to know your data set. Uh, you have to understand uh, what type of uh, data you have. So basically it falls into uh, two categories, the quantitative data and the uh, qualitative data. So depending on the data, we will have uh, different techniques to uh, analyze uh, our data, right? So the quantitative data, uh, as the name implies, it's about quantitative data that deals with quantities. And it is basically expressed in numbers. Uh, the data type is basically numeric data type. So quantitative analysis, it involves examining numeric data to identify patterns and quantify relationship between the, the, the variables. Uh, the second category is qualitative data. Uh, that uh, is a data that uh, approximates or characterizes something. Uh, and the data type is usually numeric, which means the data will be represented as words or uh, some descriptions. Uh, so such kind of uh, data, we call it uh, a qualitative data, right? So once you identify whether your data is quantitative or qualitative, we will choose uh, the uh, data analysis techniques, right? Um, uh, your data, basically, the uh, solar farm site collector data is uh, quantitative, so we will focus our uh, techniques on that one. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, the type of data analysis uh, you carry out largely depends on um, your goal or uh, on the insights that you are uh, hoping to gain or the questions that you want to answer, right? So broadly speaking, 
um, all types of data analysis uh, fit into uh, into the following uh, basically four uh, categories. I just want to uh, emphasize on uh, EDA. That's why I include it, but they, they are basically four. Uh, the first one is a descriptive uh, analysis. So it aims uh, to answer the question of what happened, right? Uh, having the data, you can uh, explore uh, the uh, different relationships between the, the variables that you have and can answer what happened uh, in the past, in the past. So the descriptive analysis uh, mainly focus on uh, the past. So for that, we will, we will basically have to deal with the uh, measure of central tendencies like the, the mean, uh, the median, the mode, et cetera. And also a uh, measure of spread like the variance, the standard division, uh, the range, uh, et cetera. Uh, under this category, or even before we, uh, yeah, uh, under this one, uh, we need to know about EDA uh, or expla explanatory data analysis, uh, which includes the one that I just described. Uh, so you have to do those uh, before you go uh, on to the next phase of uh, data process. Sorry, is there any question? Or... All right. Oh, that's Quentin Academy. All right. Uh, so the the other uh, type of uh, analysis is diagnostic analysis. Uh, it will answer the question why it happened. Sorry. Could you please? Uh, is it possible to unmute? Hello, anyone from the next? Could you please mute the mic? All right, uh, so uh, diagnostics analysis, uh, it will answer the question why it happened, right? It's like um, a doctor uh, examines the patient, right? Why that kind of uh, uh, disease or sickness happened. So we have to do diagnostic analysis on our data uh, to answer the question why it happened. And the next one is a predictive analysis. The interruption from the academy is disrupting the class. Uh, I don't have the privilege, I believe. Uh, just give me a second. Ryan, I just <laughs> the 
if you can hear me, uh, please turn off the mic at the Academy. Thank you. Hello? Anyone from the Academy team? Hello? All right, let me just try to continue. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the next uh, type is uh, predictive analysis. Uh, this will answer what will happen in the future. Uh, having the, the past data, uh, uh, can we answer some questions in the future? That's what you call it, uh, predictive analysis. Um, like regression um, or curve fitting having the the, the past uh, data we will try to answer uh, uh, a future uh, that's basically forecasting what will happen uh, next so in your case uh, in the site farm uh, collected data you could answer uh, some of the questions uh, in the future uh, the, the last one is prescriptive analysis, uh, which means uh, just like the uh, a doctor prescribes a medicine for a patient uh, to alleviate some problems, uh, we could have we can have uh, some strategies to alleviate some problems or to increase uh, some. Uh, uh, kind of variable to change the, the, the course of uh, that variable. That means we should have we should we do uh, we should have to do something uh, to change something. That's what we call it uh, prescriptive analysis. Uh, uh, basically, your your data is uh, quantitative and also uh, time series. So we mainly uh, focus on uh, those. So th for the uh, quantitative analysis, we will we will talk about three of them. There are a lot of them, but here the main ones are uh, regression analysis. Uh, this is basically used to estimate the relationship between uh, a set of uh, uh, different variables which uh, variables will affect the, the dependent variable, right? If we have a multivariate uh, time series data, when we change uh, one data or the, the, uh, uh, one of the independent, how will, the, how will it change the, the dependent variable? So when you're conducting any type of regression analysis, you are looking to see if there is a correlation between Dependent variable, that's a variable or an outcome you want to measure or predict. And independent variables or factors which may have an impact on the uh, dependent variable. It's just like um, X and Y, right? X is the independent variable, Y is the dependent variable. So when you change the value of X, what will happen to the uh, dependent variable, which is Y, right? So uh, there are different uh, kinds of regression, uh, linear regression, a linear regression, and from the uh, nonlinear one, we, we, we will have uh, different types. So the aim of regression is basically for in the future of the past data uh, by changing the, the independent variable, we can estimate the the, the, uh, the dependent variable. So the aim of uh, regression is to estimate how one or more variables might impact uh, the dependent variable in order to identify uh, trends and patterns. Um, are there any questions? Any questions so far? Or is it clear? How many?
Okay. No, no, that, that, that's fine. I just want to see if there are any uh, questions here. It will be here. Uh, let me just check your screen. Oh, sorry. No questions, but background sound is disturbing. Examples. Uh, uh, I will show you some of them uh, on Google Docs. Yeah, just give me a couple of minutes. The music is high. Background noise. Uh, just give me two seconds. Let me call them. Yeah, I could be. I could be like, come on, I'm going to Uh, all right, thank you. Now it's it's clear. Yeah, sorry. Can you see my screen now? I think I'm here in there. That's that's why. All right, thank you. All right. So the the other uh, analysis technique for quantitative data is uh, clustering analysis, uh, also called segmentation or taxonomy. Uh, this method identifies structures within the data set, uh, mainly uh, grouping uh, similar features or uh, variables together. It's like sorting objects into different uh, boxes or clusters based on their similarity. Uh, that will give us some kind of uh, hidden pattern uh, and also the data points within a similar group uh, will be homogeneous. Uh, likewise, if they are dissimilar, the data points uh, into one another, uh, they, they will be uh, a heterogeneous ones. So clustering uh, will give us uh, some indication of pattern within uh, our data, within our data. Um, the other one and the most important one for your uh, project is the time series analysis, uh, which means uh, it's uh, a data with with time, time changes, and accordingly your uh, data or your variable value will change, right? So time series analysis, it's a statistical technique used to identify trends uh, and patterns over time. Uh, and it's a, a sequence of data points which measures the same variable at different points in time. For example, if you are measuring a temperature uh, at a specific location, uh, it, it will vary throughout the day, right? Now it might be 24 degrees centigrade and in an hour, an hour later, it might be uh, uh, 25 or 22 point something uh, degree Celsius. So our variable will change in time. Uh, so uh, in another one, weekly sale figures or monthly email signups, they, they, they change through time, right? So such kind of uh, data is a time series data. So by looking at uh, time related trends, and uh, analysts are able to forecast how the variable of interest may fluctuate in the future, uh, like using regression, right? Or using curve fitting. Uh, we, we will 
find a best curve for that trend and then using that curve we can predict uh, the or forecast the uh, next value uh, so uh, we conduct time series analysis the the main uh, patterns will be uh, looking out for or in your data are uh, trends uh, which means is it stable is it linearly increasing or decreasing over an extended period of time so we have to uh, understand how the the trend uh, looks like in our data and the other one is seasonality since it's uh, a time series data uh, as the time changes, the season also changes. So some of the variables might be uh, affected or changed during the uh, uh, season. It depends. It might depend on the season. So uh, predictable fluctuations in the data due to seasonal factors over a short period of time. Um, the other one is cyclic uh, patterns uh, throughout a year. Uh, th they might repeat themselves or uh, within a day uh, it might repeat itself or it might not be exactly but the pattern might uh, repeat itself so uh, unpredictable cycles where the data fluctuates which means cyclic trends are not due to seasonality but rather many other um, uh, different reasons or different conditions they might repeat uh some cyclic pattern if they do according to the season that's not a cyclic pattern rather it's seasonality um yeah uh, see these are some of the, the the techniques that we use for uh, uh data analysis but there are a lot and they depend on uh, the data you have and the question that you want to answer or the the pattern or the future that you want to um, extract or study. Uh, yeah, uh, if you have any question, you can raise. Uh, and if not, I will I will try to demonstrate some of those uh, on Google Sheets. Uh, any questions? Um, if you have any question, please unmute yourself and speak up. Please, could you go back to the last slide? Uh, sure. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, any question? Please go back. To, oh, sorry. I'm just wait. Questions or any, I don't know, comments before we move on to Google Sheet? All right. So uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, what did you learn this morning? Uh, during the uh, visualization on Google Sheet. I don't want to repeat uh, the things that you have done already. Can someone unmute and speak up? Go on, Olisi, sorry. My name is Paul Sifu. All right, nice to meet you, Paul Lisi. Paul Lisi. Okay. Yeah. Paul C. Just Paul C. Okay. Okay. Well, so this morning we learned about the uh, data evaluation. How from the dashboard when we have when how from the the data spreadsheet when we okay. have the data how we can get uh, uh, diagrams yeah getting diagrams with the, the data that we have in different form and try to play with the, the data this is okay. a brief of what we did in the morning all right thank you anyone else 
so basically you um yeah the name is Mahimin Mahimin Ali Mahimin okay go ahead sorry <laughs> yeah that's fine that's fine um I'm just taking it from policy we learned how to use the pivot chart to visualize the data in the graph form um no. using either pie charts bar charts depending on the 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 I think the the frequency or the variables that we're supposed to plot on the graph. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right. So uh, in in that case, uh, I will just show you some basic um, EDA that you can do. Uh, uh, for example, how to get the uh, the mean or the, the 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 median those measure of central tendencies uh, you can write uh, a formula for a specific column and you can get the a mean average a median uh, and those uh, measures uh, like the variance standard deviation and also the range right so uh, basically you you need to know some of the the uh, uh built-in functions right so uh, for example uh, let me just take this column right so if i want to know those uh <coughs> measures what i will do is uh let's just write some of them this is the sample size right it's a sampled data so it's not the population uh we will have the mean uh and then we'll have the median uh, you know, the mean is the average, right? You sum everything up and you divide it by n. That's the definition of uh, mean. And the median um, is the middle, the middle data, uh, which means you have to sort it and then pick the middle one. If it is uh, odd number of uh, data points, you will have one data point. Otherwise, if it's even, uh, you will take the two middle points and average them. That means sum them up and then uh, divide them by two, right? Um, so these are the uh, measures of uh, the central tendency and the measures of spread uh, will include variance uh, and also the standard deviation. Uh, I'm gonna do this, deviation uh and also the the range uh we you can take the range that's the the max minus the mean right so to get the 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 number of samples you just you just sum up right so for this column for example if you select it uh you, you will see that the range uh that the range is from uh this is g right from g to up to the, the the end up to the the last point that would be i don't know g fifty two thousand five hundred something yeah. that's a lot of column sorry yeah that that one uh this minus one because of the header right so that's fifty two thousand uh i can see so that's six hundred something anyway so what we'll do is all right just give me a second oh where did they go huh? okay now that's a problem I, I can i can write it again so what i will do is you you just say equals and then sum and then you give that the range right so this is a uh, g that's from g2 up to uh g you can you can do that if you don't know that the last value um you can you can just say g and then when you press enter you will have the the total sample uh not some rather count we want we want the number right 
it's not sum, rather it's count. So that's uh, 52,561. That, that would be M. And the mean, uh, you will have uh, mean equals, right? It's just the mean. And you give the, the, the range again, that's from G2 up to G. That means it's up to the end, up to the end. Uh, okay, this is, yeah. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. The, the, the built-in function is average instead of mean. So that, that would be the, the, the mean value. That would be the mean value. And then uh, you will have the median. Uh, sorry, median. And you will say equals, and then the, the median. And then you give the range that's from G2 up to G, right? And that would be the, the median. Uh, similarly, you can you can get the variance. Uh, one thing you need to know here is for the variance, there are different built-in functions, right? So, variance. This is for the sample, uh, for the sample data, this is for the population. Since our data is a sample data, uh, we can use uh, var, uh, var A, var A. Uh, and then we give the range, that's G2 up to uh, G. And then uh, we will have the, the variance. And the standard deviation, that's the square root of the variance, right? Standard deviation, uh, you can write the whole thing. Uh, either you can say uh, STDR or uh, square root of the, the variance, right? So STD, no, oh, sorry, equals STD, the, the same thing, STD VA, since it's a sample, we have to give it a G2 up to uh, G, up to the last, and then hit enter, you will have the standard deviation, right? So these are uh, the basic uh, measures that we can explore for the different columns. And you can also uh, compute the, the, the covariance between, or the relationship between the different variables, right? If I want to know the, diff, the, the, the relationship between uh, these two variables, uh, we, can, we can calculate that. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, kind of form uh, a table. How can I do that? No, that will not be okay. Um, yeah, so for example, uh, for this one and this one, what you do is, uh, that's T M mod A, and then T M mod, right? And then you will have T mod uh, A, oh, this one has to be P, right? Um, let me add a column. Uh, insert column, either way. I just want to make it for... And this would be E mod uh, B, 
and then we can calculate the 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 covariance right so this these two since they are the same variable that would be one and this will be one right and then you can calculate this one using the the cover uh, between these two yeah so you can you can use the uh, built-in functions and do uh, some eda uh, explanatory data analysis yeah any questions that's yeah any questions is it clear you, you have to dig deeper to uh solve the the, the challenge but yeah uh go ahead who is that if you want if i want um, i yeah, Kurt, I am a bit confused from the very last slide. I think the C mode A and C mode B, I don't know what, yeah. how that came Oh, in. these are the, the, the column names. Your sample, your sample, yes. This yes, is, this is a column name for this one. And yeah, this is that's a mode, right? Oh, uh, you mean you don't know what this means? Yes, I don't know uh, and why it's there. Uh, it's it's in the data. It's already explained here. This is temperature of uh, module A in degree Celsius, and this is temperature of module B in degree Celsius. Oh, the, the, okay. the, it's explained there in the data set uh, in your challenge oh. document. Oh yeah. So yeah, what I'm trying to uh tell you that you can compute the correlation between the different variables right okay, um, thank you. Might be a way for maybe selecting them once and then compute the the, the covariance or the correlation i mean um yeah so these are just uh, a representation for uh this temperature of module A and temperature of module B. Thank you. Any other questions? Pleasure. Uh, is it clear or did I give you some ideas how to do those EDA analysis? Uh, Maconnen? Which one do you want me to recap? Unmute yourself and speak up, please. Temperature and humidity. McConnell, are you there? Oh, mean variance ETC. Oh, uh, okay. So that the mean, uh, there are built-in functions, right? Uh, that's mean is average, or you can do that. Uh, you can use the, the formula, average or mean means you sum up all the data points and you divide it the, the uh, number of uh, data points or sample size, right? So th this is just average, and then you give the, the data range. This is from G2. We are doing the, the mean for uh, temperature module A or whatever, uh, and that runs from G2 up to uh, the last. You can specify the last, uh, but you can also say just G. That will take up to the, the end. Uh, similarly, the mean, uh, you can, do it using the built-in function which is i mean the median and you give it the range uh, the same goes for the variance and the standard deviation there are uh, built-in functions that you can use to compute the uh, different uh, measures of uh, central tendency and uh, measures of uh, variation or spread all right uh, can we do an example on data cleaning and preparation? 
data cleaning and preparation. Uh, I thought you did that already. Uh, uh, you did data wrangling, right? Uh, I, I believe yesterday or not this morning. I think it did yesterday. Um, on, on this data, I didn't see any missing values or anything to clean up. It looks uh, cleaned already. Uh, but you have to explore if there are any null values. And if there are, uh, you have to do some action. Uh, are we going to drop them or are we going to uh, fill them uh, using the different uh, techniques like forward fill or backward fill or the, the average, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, what I mean is if, for example, this data is missed, um, since it's just only one uh, point, even in, in the column and both in the row, uh, it's not advisable to uh, just ignore the, the whole row rather you have to fill it uh, and there are different uh, techniques that you can use uh, for um, uh, filling the, the missing data that could be averaging like taking the, the column average and put it there or uh, forward fill that means uh, you can use this value there or back fill you can use that or you can use interpolation etc you, you have to uh, read about the techniques for handling missing values i think that's a uh, session yeah for yesterday yeah yeah it was it was the session for yesterday but we didn't get any practical example we just got the slides that's why i asked for a practical uh, okay so uh, f uh i didn't see that the uh, other uh, data, uh, it's just for Benin. You can check the other two, but uh, inspecting just visually, uh, it doesn't seem to have any non value. So it's you are good to go. Okay, thank you. Pleasure. Any other question? All right then, um, have a good evening. Yeah, you, uh, you can stop the recording, maybe, I don't know. All right, pleasure. Anyone from Tin Academy? All right, cheers.